Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ number seven. It's the series where I get to answer all your knife questions, whether they're big or small. Got a few cool stuff to, a uh, few cool things to answer this week. Got some more knife recommendations to go through as well as some survival discussion. Let's do it. All right, before I dive into the questions today, I actually owe an apology to K-Bar and Bob Dozier. Uh, this is the K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter. And on two separate occasions now, and thank you folks for in the comments for calling me out on this. It's well-deserved. Two separate occasions, I've described this as having a right side only thumb stud. But as you guys have been so kind to remind me, this actually is a reversible thumb stud. You can take uh, the screw out here, flip this around. So this makes a good righty or left hand carry. The clip is re you know, uh, reversible also. I'm sorry, K-Bar, I'm sorry, Knife Center audience. <laughs> Thanks for uh, catching my mistake. I can't believe I let it slip by me twice, but it's, it's a solid knife. These are just, uh, just over 20 bucks, really good design. And uh, recently announced they're uh, coming out with a D2 version. So look for that coming real soon. All right, our first question today comes from Matt Gonzalez. And he says, I love this series. Thank you very much, sir. Is there a story behind your aversion to lashing a knife onto a stick, creating that spear survival option? I know it used to be a popular feature in the past. Don't see it as much these days. Um, yes, so that's kind of one of those survival tropes where you take your, uh, take your knife, you lash it to the end of a stick, and you can use it as a spear for self-defense or hunting or what have you. Um, but it doesn't uh, really sit well with me for one, basically one big reason is in a survival scenario, your knife is probably going to be one of your most valuable assets on your person. And you don't want to risk doing anything that's gonna damage that knife or potentially lose that knife. And both of those things, there's a high prob probability of it if you have it lashed to the end of a stick. Um, if you use it as a throwing weapon or even just a, a stabbing weapon uh, against wildlife, there's a high likelihood uh, it'd be very easy to damage the edge and then you don't have a usable knife. Worst case scenario, it breaks or your lashing comes loose and then you've got no knife. Not a good situation. Um, there are a few, uh, I will say however, a few very narrow times where I think it's useful. Um, primarily if you need to reach something that's out of reach, say in, the, uh, in a tree that you can't climb but there's something up there you need to get to, uh, that could be a limited use option, whether it's food, uh, one of the classic examples I've heard before is uh, a pilot who's ejected from their plane and they're, they come down, they're on the forest floor or wherever, but their pack may be suspended. That could be a reason to get up there and uh, cut the straps loose or something to get to the rest of your gear. But apart from that, just keep the knife on your person where you're going to have more use out of it. Uh, if you need some kind of spear for a defensive or hunting scenario, you can always take a, a, a pole of wood that you'd be using for your spear anyway, cut it down, and you can always harden the point in the fire and use it that way. All right, our next question comes from Logan Prickett. He says, what recommend, recommendation do you have for a $75 and under knife with premium construction, fit and finish, and handle material? Blade material doesn't matter as much. Um, you guys must have been listening to my, my rant last week where I said steel doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I've got a real cool option for you. I'm going to bust your budget, but only by two bucks. This is the Kershaw Bare Knuckle, which comes in at $77 right now. And this is an American made Kershaw and it's made in the same factory that makes the ZT knives. This is a premium feeling knife for sure. You've got an anodized aluminum handle, and on the back you can see we've got that same aluminum because they use their sub frame lock mechanism, which gives the, you got the, you know, essentially the lockup of a full titanium lock bar, although in this case it's not titanium, but a full, full size lock bar like you would get on a frame lock, and that's just anchored to the aluminum here on the back or at whatever other material they decide to use. But it lets them keep the weight down a little bit. Uh, cause at this, um, at this price point, if they were going to go with a full frame lock on the back, it would probably be stainless steel, which would probably be a little bit heavier, uh, or would be a little bit heavier than the aluminum. So you get the advantages of the weight, but also the cool look uh, of the color coming around the back as well. But it's a flipper. You've got KVT bearings in the pivot. Uh, the flipping action out of the box, uh, is a little bit hit or miss. Uh, well, don't take that the wrong way. They're all very good, but some of them have seemed to need just a little bit of breaking in where it's a little bit stiff at first until you use it a bunch. This particular one uh, is not too heavy right out of the box. It's just a really nice snappy action. 
And you got this cool kind of modified Warncliffe blade, Sandvix 14C28N stainless steel. Really good steel, I'm a big fan of it actually. Um, you see it a lot on some of the more affordably priced Kershaw knives, but I think it performs uh, definitely above its price point because you can get a really fine edge very easily, holds the edge a, a good long time as well. But if you do want more premium options, we've got a couple of Knife Center exclusives with a 20 CV blade. You can also check those out on the site. Deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible. I mean, it's put together just about perfectly. The fit and finish is great. It's an awesome design and it's pretty darn affordable and made in the USA too. All right, next up we have a question from Jean Esch or Jean Esch, I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce your name there. Uh, but are there knives similar to the Spidey Chef or the Leong Ma Cuff 2 at a more affordable price? I rather like the way they look and are close to perfect for my EDC, but they're way out of my budget. Let's say hard $130 max. Uh, yes, there are some options and they come in way under that, uh, that price point uh, that you set there. Um, and I know what you mean. I, this is my personal Spidey Chef that I carry. Uh, these come in about $235, uh, so definitely not cheap. Uh, even more expensive is the Leong Ma Cuff, uh, which has some cool, uh, this cool top flipper mechanism for opening it, which is kind of neat. But they're, uh, they kind of ride a similar type of style. You've got a bit of an offset to the edge. Uh, and with the name like Chef, you think food prep, right? Um, I don't really use a folder for food prep, no matter how it's shaped, but the way these, uh, this shape works really well, it's great on a draw cut, any type of long slices, it's really fantastic. Um, and I know there's some people that have given me hard times when we've posted this knife on Instagram about the snail trails on the handle here. But hey man, that's what happens when you actually carry and use your, uh, your matte titanium handle knives. You get some marks on it. Uh, and I'm definitely not afraid to use that knife. I love it. But for a more budget-oriented option, new this year is the CRKT Overland, the new TJ Schwartz design. And these come in at $55. And especially, uh, it's even closer to the cuff than the, uh, than the Spyderco. You can see it's got that same, same type of style, that same type of vibe, scaled down just a little bit. And of course the materials are less premium uh, to go with that $55 price point. It's got G10 on the front. Uh, this is the only color available right now. Black stone washed finish. It's an 8CR13 MOV uh, blade steel. So it's not a high end blade steel, but it is gonna be able to be maintained quite easily but you've got that all important offset to the edge. It's gonna work well on any kind of surface. If you do wanna do some food prep with it, you could. Uh, but again, just like the Spidey Chef in the cuff, any of those longer draw cuts are gonna be really nice. And even more so than my Spidey Chef, you can use the tip a little bit better on those scoring cuts or, or dragging the tip cuts uh, with this particular design. Frame lock on the back, black stone wash to match the blade. But one of the really uh, important things that I like that they did with this design is the execution of the pocket clip. It's folded over, but it's not technically deep carry, uh, but they've done two things to make this super easy to use. They've milled out a slot or a little cavity in the stainless steel frame so they could inset the, uh, the pocket clip and then they've used flush screws as well. So there's nothing sticking up to kind of snag your, uh, your pocket as you're taking it in and out. So it's a, uh, just a very comfortable knife to extract and use like that. But I think one of my favorite things about this design um, well, I'll get to that in a second, but folded up, you can see it folds up nice and compact. Certainly with that type of uh, wide sweeping type of shape when it's open, you wouldn't expect it to be this compact when it's closed, but it is, so it carries nice and easily like that as well. You can pop it open despite no bearings in the pivot. But my favorite thing is the balance of this knife. Right where your index finger sits is right where that balance point is. So you're, you know, sometimes those stainless steel frame locks can make the knives a little handle heavy. It's not the case here. It's perfectly balanced, very agile, just a fantastic everyday carry design. All right, next question comes from Jeffrey Popple. He says, was wanting a recommendation for wood carving pocket knife or smaller fixed blade that has a good blade steel. Most of what I see offered has either non-descriptive or not very good steel. Um, sure. Um, first off, uh, I did some folder recommendations for this uh, in FAQ number four, so we'll leave a link to that. Um, but I want to address your, uh, your thought about, about some of these knives having not very good steel. Um, I actually disagree with that. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the carving-centric knives, whether they're fixed or folders, tend to have simpler carbon steels, and that's actually because those are the right steels for the job. And what I mean by that is, you know, for, for whittling, you're dealing with wood, oftentimes very hard wood, 
So you need a really fine edge to really pull off the push cuts that are most common very well. If you get something with like really big carbides or really high wear resistance, the, uh, the action uh, of actually wood carving, the actual interface of edge to wood doesn't always work as well as a simpler steel with smaller carbides and a much finer grain structure that you can actually get laser sharp a heck of a lot easier when you go to do that carving. That's the most important thing when you're doing that job. So when we talk about a good steel for a whittling knife, I think something like 1075, 1095, the simple, simple carbon steels like that, 01 even, uh, are some of the truly best options for the job at hand. Uh, and it's true for some stainlesses too, like the Sandvik families, the 12C27s, uh, AEBLs, stuff like that, uh, works very, very well for this type of task. Um, so I, like I said, I left you some, uh, or I will leave a link to FAQ number four for some folders. Uh, but I got a couple of fixed blades here. Uh, again, on the simpler side, this is the Mora Eldris or the Mora Knief Eldris. It comes in 25 bucks, so decently affordable. Uh, and they're using stainless steel, in this case, Sandvix 12C27, which uh, the 12C27 and especially 13C26, um, which, lots of numbers here. The 14C28N on that bare knuckle is actually a, a variant of 13C26. We're getting into the weeds now. But that family of steels tends to have a very fine grain structure. You can hone it very easily to a very fine edge, which is what you want. You don't want a toothy edge when you're carving wood. Um, and it's easy to do it with, it's, it's easy to hone on these steels. Blade length on these is nice and short, about 2.2 inches. Handle is also a little short, but it is nice and fat, so you can still get a pretty fat or firm grip on the knife. Scandi grind, of course, uh, wood carving, especially wood carving push cuts works great at the heel of that blade with that Scandi. And then they've actually scalloped out the uh, behind the Scandi grind here at the tip to kind of relieve uh, or take away a bit of that resistance so you can do some finer radius cuts on insides of curves, that sort of thing, without so much of the shoulder of that Scandi grind getting in the way. These are really cool. Uh, like I said, really affordable, 25 bucks even uh, more affordable. These are around 15 or less than 15. I find myself reaching for my Mora basic wood carver more than anything else uh, when I'm doing my wood carving. Again, 12C27 stainless, nice narrow blade with that real fine tip. Not scalloped uh, like that Eldris is, but because that tip is so fine, it's really easy to go around some of those inside curves. It, uh, it's a comfortable handle for me. I can get a nice firm grip on it. I mean, I've, I've actually you know, been experimenting. I've made my own wood carving knives, uh, some of my own designs, and I keep coming back to this, this nice, inexpensive little Mora right here. It just works fantastically well, and it doesn't need something like S30V or anything like that. If you do uh, insist on wanting something with something like S30V or, or any, of, any kind of premium steel, um, handle comfort uh, in your folder is gonna be more important than, than anything else. Uh, so go with something that's comfortable, uh, maybe the Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter. Uh, the handles on these are G10, they're radius nice, nicely, so they fit really well in the hand. You've got S35VN on this one, uh, and then uh, blade length, uh, three and a half inches. Uh, a little bit longer than I like to carve with, but still not uh, astronomically big, so it's too unwieldy, and about 114 bucks. So decent price for what you're getting, all told. All right, next question is from CJ12Sing. This is a great series, really enjoying the content. A um, bit long-winded here, but we'll muddle through. I have a question uh, for a flipper type of knife, knife made of 1095 carbon steel. Would really love, love to have that in a flipper. Um, so he also carries a CRKT crossbones with OS8 and an artisan waistline in D2. Used to carry all three, but recently semi-retired the old timer. Um, Three knives, good on you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a two knife a day normally person. Um, yeah, there's uh, in answer to your question, there's not really a whole lot of flippers in any kind of carbon steel. Um, so I have uh, an, an off the wall suggestion for you here. That bare knuckle again. Um, that 14C28, um, that Sandvik, uh, you know, kind of family of steels behaves similarly to a carbon steel, just in a stainless format. It hones easily like they do, like a carbon steel will. You can get a good fine edge with them. Um, yeah, maybe check that guy out. Long question, but short answer for you this time. All right, our next question is from Anthony Florio. He says, hey, David, I've been getting into front flippers recently. 
I got a Civivi XARC and I love the fidget factor, but the handle doesn't give me that EDC feeling, quote unquote. Could you re recommend a good front flipper that's under a hundred bucks? Uh, man, you're just, you're doing this, uh, just doing this because you know I suck at doing front flippers, don't you? <laughs> um, yeah, for some reason, uh, I've, I've always find them a little bit fumbly for me, but I do have a couple, a uh, couple of cool options for you here. Uh, the first is the Real Steel G5 Metamorph. Uh, this particular one with the uh, all black look here is a Knife Center exclusive. Black G10 liner lock, uh, 14C28N stainless steel again, sensing a bit of a pattern here. But they're really nice. Some of the, the other versions are a little bit a uh, little bit pricier than this one, but not by much. Uh, but I really like this design. It's got, yeah, see, I told you I suck at front flippers. <laughs> um, we've also got an orange and black that's a Knife Center exclusive. But these carry nice and slim in the pocket. You've certainly got a very agile blade, really fine tip for doing detail work or piercing or any sort of any of that sort of thing. Um, but this is kind of a um, there are some similarities to the Exarc, uh, I think, in terms, in terms of like the long slender profile. Uh, so if this doesn't quite do it for you, I have an option here from Boker. This is the Excalibur One. This comes in at 90 bucks, D2 blade steel. And as you can see, it's definitely a much broader, uh, more workmanlike type of shape overall. So maybe this will do it for you. Um, like I said, three and a half inches D2 steel, nice stonewash finish going on there. But this knife carries nice and flat in the pocket too. You got G10 on the front, nice and thin, but they still did put a little bit of contour on it, which is nice. And then a stainless steel frame lock on the back, uh, pocket clip tip up or tip down, whichever you prefer, open back to construction so you can wash it out nice and easy. And you got that good front flipper action. This one I'm a little bit better at. I can't really flick it, but I can get that nice slow roll. But I love the blade shape for EDC. You got a good, uh, almost full flat grind there. It's just a very, very versatile shape and a pretty cool design. All right, next question is from David Palmer. He says, if you can only bring one into a week long forest survival situation, what would you bring, an ax or a knife? Also, do you think Bigfoot exists and have you ever seen a UFO? Well, we don't have to worry about Bigfoot anymore because Sam Elliott took him out in that movie. So I, I think we're safe there. UFOs might be another story. Um, as to the meat of your question, uh, week long forest survival ax versus knife. Uh, I'm knife guy all the way. Um, especially, uh, it, it kind of really boils down to comfort level. Um, I feel a lot safer swinging a big knife than I do swinging an ax, especially if it's a, you say survival situation as opposed to week long uh, expedition when you're putting yourself out there. But if, you're, if I'm truly trying to survive and I'm hungry, I'm tired, I might be cold or like fighting you know, exhaustion, I do not want to be swinging a big heavy ax around. Plus, you can get just a lot more versatility out of a knife, whether it's something like just a, Becker, a big Becker BK9, your nine inches of uh, 1095 Crovan, solid design. You can still do uh, small whittling stuff with this, uh, surprisingly so, given the size of it. I mean, if you try to do, if you're trying to carve a trap or something with something like this Cold Steel Trail Boss, no, no, no way, man. Uh, give me the knife any day. Um, especially if it's something, it could be something cool and versatile like this TM Hunt M18, which is also from my personal collection. I think we may be out of stock of these at the moment, but you can still get some good chopping from the convex section here. You've got the recurve with the hollow grind in the back for some of the carving stuff, bit of the, uh, the draw knife stuff. And you can always use the lanyard to support it on your forearm and choke up here and use this section here. You can use this section for some smaller, uh, smaller tasks. You can even use it for, for some skinning. Uh, I've seen a guy actually skin and quarter a deer with one of these. It really is a, a versatile platform overall. So yeah, definitely give me the knife over the, uh, over the ax. Uh, but in, on, in all honesty, I'd probably take a smaller knife and my silky big boy saw instead, maybe like a five inch something, uh, five inch blade or so that's even more lightweight. And you'll be cut, even with both of those tools, you'll have less weight to worry about than either of these. All right, lastly, a question from Ravecoin. He said, what would be the best hatchet length and weight for hiking and bushcraft? Um, well, I've kind of hinted at my, my feelings on, on that. It, it kind of ties into my ax versus knife thoughts. Not a huge fan of hatchets personally myself uh, for the same types of safety reasons. Um, axes I'm a little more uh, comfortable with, but on a hatchet, um, you have to be even more careful when using it because if you happen to glance off of a cut, 
Um, as a, a friend of mine likes to say, that edge is liable to go hunting for you and might catch yourself uh, on the leg. Um, but if you want to use a, uh, a hatchet for bushcraft, the primary thing you're going to want is a uh, make sure the handle is comfortable right here underneath the head because you're going to want to choke up and be able to hold that axe head or that hatchet head to do some smaller work. Um, but this is a nice solid one right here. This is from Snow and Neely. This is the Outdoorsman's Belt Axe, comes in just under 60 bucks. It's US made, which is really cool. Uh, that Trail Boss is cheaper, it's like 30 bucks, but it is made in Taiwan. But it's a good solid budget option. Um, so for me, I, again, I, I personally shy away from a hatchet for bushcraft, but Snow and Neely makes a good one. Condor does some good stuff. Uh, Holtzbruck, we carry all of those. You can check those out. Um, but I, I'd personally go for an ax before that. Uh, the Trail Boss uh, is a little bit larger uh, when a lot of the experts like to talk about ideal length, um, where you essentially, if you grip the ax right uh, with your hand and extend your arm, you want it to essentially be as long as your forearm. This one is a little bit long for me. Um, so, you know, you're going to know your actual measurements to so take that into account based on the, uh, the specs that we have on our website. Uh, but I would actually, uh, on a smaller forest size axe, I'd pair it with a uh, nice pair of knee pads maybe because it's going to be safer for you to actually kneel down and use the axe uh, than it will be if you're standing up using a full size axe since you know, you've got the shorter thing. Safer, safety is key, or just get a big knife. All right, that's all I've got to answer for you this week. Thank you everyone who submitted your questions. And if you want a chance to get one of your own questions answered, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description as always. And while you're over at thenifecenter.com, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program so you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from The Knife Center signing off. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.